All right, so UFC 268 is a wrap. It's in the books. Let's just start off with the main event. Um, great, great main event. Kamar Usman versus Kobe Covington. I thought the show was going to close early. I thought we were going to have a KO in the second round. Uh, Usman landed two strong left hooks on uh, Kobe Covington. But luckily for Covington, it happened close to the end of the round. So the fight was able to continue. And we got a full five-round fight, entertaining five-round fight. Uh, Kobe Covington was trying to work and get that takedown against uh, Kamar Usman. Uh, I saw in the broadcast after uh, that round, they later showed that Usman was at 100% uh, takedown defense. So I guess what it is is that even if you have the person touch their knee, you know, you have just because you get on their back and they stand up doesn't mean it's a takedown. So Usman is still at 100% defense. For the time being, we don't know if there's like an appeals process or anything to way to check on that, but we'll see. Overall, uh, that storybook is closed. Kamal Usman is now 2-0 on Kobe Covington. Uh, decisive victory. So people say, or well, the question is, where does Usman end in the uh, overall greatest welterweight of all time? I'm not ready to give him that story because, I mean... We're talking about four victories over, you know, two people. And then we're talking about a fifth victory over uh, someone who was a little bit like Gilbert, Gilbert Burns for the weight class. So it's going to take, for me personally, uh, some new blood. Uh, definitely Hazmat uh, Shemaev is, is high on that list coming to mind. Vicente Luque was on my mind. Um... Uh, but he, he didn't make weight, and I'm just going to chalk that up to a misnomer and say maybe. But uh, Vicente Luque, Leon Edwards, there's a couple of names. If he gets those three victories, then, you know, I, I'd say he's, he's, he's the best. He's the best. That's what it takes for me, honestly. Uh, let's talk about the Women's Strawweight Championship. Great, great fight. I thought Zhang Wiley was holding her own. Um, I thought she did a great job to win. Uh, maybe she did lose the first round. I got to go back and check that. But I know uh, for the most part, uh, she was in pretty good control of the fight. Anytime I was doing multiple things, you know, I'm working the Twitter uh, speaks. I'm working the, uh, working the, you know, the whole Twitter system. So I have to go back and watch that fight a little bit closer. But I knew in the third round when Rose was able to stay in complete control for the entire round that Zhang Wali was more than likely going to lose that fight. And it was close, but it was a split decision lost. So then I started thinking to myself, what's next for Zhang Wali? You know, it's pretty tough when you fall off that mountain. You know, it's kind of like the championship fight. You know, you lose to the champion twice. You know, Colby, Colby Covington lost to Usman twice. Zhang Wali's lost to Rose Navin Yunus twice. Where do you go from there? How do you rebound? And then I started looking at the bracket, you know, the, the rankings. And uh, number one, Whaley's spirits were, were very high after that fight. Um, and number two, uh, as far as her, who she would fight next, there's some great names. Uh, Marina Rodriguez comes to mind. Um, I think Carla Esparza is going to get that that nod to, to go in and fight Rose, Rose Namajunas. I don't know if there's going to need to be some type of fight in between there to make it official who gets next chance, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, Rose Namajunas, man, you know, she's beaten pretty much everybody. For me, uh, Rose needs to fight uh, Carla Esparza and Marina Rodriguez. Um, I think Marina Rodriguez is on fire. I think she's a tough out for just about, you know, anyone in that division. I think Marina Rodriguez is tough even for someone like Valentina Shevchenko. Not saying she would win, not ready to say that just yet, but Marina Rodriguez looks like she's got some skill. And I would love to see that matchup between her and Rose Namajunas uh, mix it up on the ground game because that's, you know, the secret weapon that Rose has is like, okay, your stand-up game is solid, uh, your power is there, but what's up on the ground? What you got there? So that's, that's going to be interesting. Now back to the fight card, uh, Frankie Edgar versus Marlon Vera. Very, very tough and unfortunate uh, Frankie Edgar, in my opinion, was leading this three-round fight, but I I saw those knees coming up the middle, those high, those front kicks coming up the middle, and 
in the third round, uh, Marlon Vera started getting off on his attacks, and it just felt like he was throwing those uh, up kicks down the down the middle so often and so frequent that at least one was bound to catch Frankie. How impactful it would have been was questionable, but I think it was a mixture of third round uh, pressure, all those things. Um, tenderizing Frankie Yeager up and he landed that front kick and it was picture perfect right fingertips right on the chin so shout out to Marlon Vera I actually did not pick him to win that fight I'm not sure if I was going more so off of nostalgia because Frankie Yeager is still that dude um but yeah and as far as next fight Shane Burgos versus Billy Quarantino I'm still getting familiar with Billy uh Quarantino and Shane Burgos, I just wanted to see him bounce back from that um, Edson Barbosa fight, have him put on a great performance, and he did that. Uh, both of them had a great fight, and uh, Shane Burgos got, got the unanimous decision, well earned. And the people's main event, starting off the main event car for UFC 268, Justin Gaethje and Michael Chandler. Whew, there's so much I could say about this fight. Uh, I'll start off by saying thank you. You know, that's pretty much what you say when you see this type of performance. I think something happened to uh, Michael Chandler's hand where he wasn't able to be competitive in the third round. But he showed nothing but guts, heart, all those uh, great words that we use to describe uh, character. In the first round, I will say I feel like Michael Chandler cut through an uppercut and caught Justin Gaethje. I will say that. That's I don't like to uh, be a, a you know couch coach but me watching that fight and seeing how Justin Gaethje was leaning and just dropping that hand I could have swore that if uh, Michael Chandler threw a right uppercut or a left left uppercut especially a left uppercut you know what I'm saying I think if he were throwing a left uppercut he might have caught Justin Gaethje in the first round but that's just me I'll have to go back and watch the fight I say that respectfully you know but let me know what you guys think about that so um my battery's going to die, but let's see if we can get through these. Alex Piera, he put the middleweight class on notice that he's arrived. Still, his wrestling game, it needs a little bit of work, but that's not necessarily always going to be an issue, and he's got time to grow. I mean, he's working with Glover Teixeira, so he's going to get that game, and once he does, his weight class. He looked like the dude from Street Fighter when he threw that up kick, that, that flying knee. He, this is uh, Saget. That's what he looked like. Uh, very top prospect. He's going to be a problem. But we got to see how that, how that journey goes. You know, first fight, it was very impressive. But I'm not ready to say this is, you know, but he is. He's that guy. But, you know, I got to see a couple more fights against some top names. Let's see who he possibly could fight. Um, in the middleweight class, we're talking about. I mean, you got people like Robert Whitaker, you know, Derek Brunson, uh, Sean Strickland. Uh, you know, names like that. He's a dangerous dude. The middleweight class is so dangerous, you know, very, very dangerous. I just don't even know who, who he fights next. Is he, he going to fight Uriah Hall next? Paula Costa? So many interesting fights you could do there. Um, and the last fight I want to talk about is the Bobby Green and Al Iaquinta fight. Uh, I'm a big uh, Al, Quinta, Al Al Quinta fan. I have been since he was first introducing us to his uh, his new endeavors of real estate. Thought he was just you know pushing all the right buttons, making noise, and then he had that fight against uh, Khabib and Magomedov, and he did a great job. I mean, he pretty much stepped a lot of takedowns for for the longest time, and he went into that fight on short notice. Uh, as for Bobby Green, you know, he just puts out great performances. Everyone saw his performance against Rafael Fiziv, Finviz, and uh, I thought he won that fight. And immediately he hops back in here. I could have sworn he just fought maybe last month or two months ago. And here he is taking out Al Al Quinta in New York. Uh, they're both from that part of the, the states. And he gets a first-round KO. Ooh, and it was a nice one. Um, impressive performance. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about the rest of the cards, uh, fights on the card. Uh, Chris Curtis, great job with the first round KO of Phil Halls. And another newcomer to the UFC, uh, Nazardin Imovov. Uh, he KO'd Edmund Shabazian in the second round. Didn't see that coming. Um, but that's the game we play. 
So uh, we'll talk about these fights more.